So apparently there's like a, I guess an argument or a very big discussion about if you can motion track in Premiere. Cause like when you do it in After Effects, you're kind of applying keyframes to whatever your, like your footage or your layer is, but it's like, it's, I don't know, it's different. So <laughs> this video is gonna be about how to motion track in Premiere Pro. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Relly, and welcome back to another episode. I'm gonna call this an episode, an episode of How You Do That. That's where I take a post that I did on Instagram or any other platform other than YouTube and I just explain my process or how I did it or how I approach it. Never saying that it's the right way to do it, but it's one way to do it. In this video, like I said, I'm gonna talk about motion tracking in Premiere Pro and I'm gonna use um, a dance video that I did a while back. I actually made a video explaining how I edit dance videos specifically without the glow lines. You can go watch that video. It's a really good video and I, I, I'm actually proud of myself for making that video. Anyway, I'm specifically gonna talk about this dance video where I track Tatiana's head. As you can see when you watch the video, it's, it's moving, the camera feels like it's moving with her head, kind of like it is right now with my head. But I'm just gonna explain a, a quick method of how to do it. So this video is supposed to be somewhat short and I'm gonna get through it as quick as I can. So let's get right into it. Uh, let it be known that like whatever you're gonna track, depending on where it is already in the footage, like if it's not in the center of your footage already, you might have to scale your clip up because if you move the position keyframe, then you'll get the, you'll see the, the black borders come around and you definitely don't want that. So what I do is I make a reference point um, or a reference area or whatever. I personally use a new title and I'll, you know, make a vertical line, a horizontal line and make sure they're both aligned to the center. And that's what I personally use as my reference point. You don't have to do that. You can type a letter X and that could be your reference point. And you just wanna make sure your, your crosshairs in my instance or your letter or your, whatever your ref reference point is, you wanna make sure that starts where you have, like where you want everything to be tracked. Wherever you start, you wanna make the first keyframe. You click that watch right beside the position <laughs> position label and you just, you, you, you're done. Um, no, I'm just kidding, you're not done. So after you click that watch, you move one frame forward. Usually you just hit the arrow key, your right arrow key, moves one frame forward, forward. And what that might do is um, that your object might be not lined up with your reference point anymore. So what you gotta do, you gotta adjust the position and you move it on the x-axis, the y-axis. You do that, you know, moving one frame at a time until you get to a point where you don't need to track your object anymore. Now, some people might say that's the boring or tedious way to do it. It might be the longest way to do it, but that's honestly the way that I do it. It's not a bother to me. Um, I personally just pop some headphones in and I just listen to music that has nothing to do with the video that I'm editing. And I just sit there and just go to town and. I don't know, adjust my keyframes. That's all I, all I gotta do. I mean, I'm just, you just get in this zone, you know what I'm saying? You're just focused. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is you set your first keyframe like before and you skip ahead about five or 10 keyframes. So um, if I remember correctly, it's shift and then the arrow and they'll skip five keyframes each time. Um, so let's say you start with one keyframe, you skip to the 10th one, you adjust it, make sure everything lines up skip 10 more frames, adjust it, 10 more frames, and so on. And then what you can do is after you finish, you go to the middle of each of the keyframes. So between the first and the 10th one, you go to the fifth keyframe in the middle, and if it needs to be adjusted, you do that, and you go to the middle of each one. After you do that, you go back to the middle of those, and then so on and so on. The reason that might be a little faster is because you might not necessarily need to do every single keyframe. You still tracking with me? Does that make sense? Let me know if it doesn't make sense. I'm always open for questions, any kind of comments, just, let me know and I got you. So after you have everything keyframed and how you want it to look all nice and beautiful and all that kind of stuff, delete your reference point and then just watch back the beautiful creation you just made. And you're just gonna love it and you just you might cry because how beautiful it is. I totally understand if you would rather do it in After Effects. I typically do motion tracking more in After Effects since it literally is pretty much for After Effects. Um, but if you are like in the position where you either A, don't have access to After Effects or B, you think After Effects is like this big monster that you're kind of scared to just approach, not just yet anyway. Let me just encourage those people and say, you can do it. You just gotta, just gotta go for it. You're gonna suck at first, but then you're gonna get better. In the words of my friend Nemo, suck less, because that's all you can do. You're gonna keep getting better and you're gonna suck less. So that is the quickest way that I know how to explain how to do 
motion tracking <laughs> in Premiere Pro. Um, let me know if you have any questions, um, any comments, concerns, issues, negative comments, dislikes, things that have nothing to do with this video that I might think is spam, but you know, you do you. Um, I'm gonna stop talking, but I appreciate you for watching and I, uh, I hope you consider subscribing. Thank you, bye. <laughs>